In first person shooters, every frame counts, even if we can't even perceive it with our eyes. We've all had those times where we surprise ourselves by how fast we react before our brain can even register that we've hit somebody on the head. And I believe that is the main strength of what this new Asus PG27 AQDP offers. It seeks to give you even more of an advantage with this 480 hertz, 1440p OLED panel with a 0.03 milliseconds response time. It's a whole lot of monitors, so we're gonna check it out today and see, is it worth upgrading if you have a 360 hertz, if you have an IPS or a TN, is it finally time to switch over to OLED? Let's take a look. Now the pricing is pretty steep at first glance. It's a thousand dollars flat, but you're getting the top of the line monitor with killer specs. Again, it's OLED, 480 hertz, 0.03 milliseconds response time, and it's 1440p, which I believe is a sweet spot for gaming and movies and content consumption. Now when Asus in the past released their 360 hertz, 1440p monitor that was IPS, it started off at 1049 or $1,049. So they're only starting this one off at a thousand, it's OLED, whereas they sold us an IPS for 1049. You would think with inflation and everything going on that it would be like 1,500 or something like that. So when I kind of scale it to what they've been releasing and the time period that we're in, I don't think it's that bad of a deal within context. I don't want to say that thousand dollars is just like throwaway money, but within context. Now the design of the monitor is really nice. The W OLEDs have a thinner panel than the QLEDs that with the heatsink on the back. It gives a nice clean minimal look. Has a light up RGB standard ASUS logo on the back with some inspiring text. The stand is a little big though if you have a shorter desk with a low sensitivity. So I recommend putting this on a monitor arm. The menu button is on the underside of the ASUS symbol to easily navigate through the settings. So this does have ELMB and a lot of you might be wondering, is it worth it to run it? I don't think so because you're gonna have to drop it down to 240 hertz to run that or 120. And if I'm buying this, if I'm paying $1,000 for the top of the line specs, 480 hertz, I'm just gonna run it at the 480 hertz without the ELMB. If I wanna do that, I'll just drop it down to another one and just save some money on the monitor. They also put in a bunch of AI technology into this monitor, my favorite of them being the AI Shadow Boost. Normally when you turn this on in other monitors, the whole screen, including the blacks, the mids, the high tones, will also raise as well, making your image look faded. Speaking of the colors, the colors on this monitor, as with OLED, they're super rich. They're super deep. This features 99% of the DCI P3 color space. Now I get asked a lot, what are my settings? And honestly, I just leave it on the racing gaming setting preset that they have. It looks great. It's a nice balance between not being overly punchy and overly colorful and also keeping the image nice and intact. And then when I watch movies and stuff, I keep it on that. And then if I'm like color grading or editing my videos, I switch to the RGB cow mode. So I just switch between those. You can always just find what you like and just test it out on the monitor. You know, dial it into what your personal preferences are. I don't think that there's a best setting for everything or everyone, just what looks good to your eyes. One feature I really miss whenever I switch off an ASUS monitor is the ability to control the aspect ratio. Being able to switch this from a 27 mode and shrink it down into a 24 inch light experience. It's an amazing feature. Now we've seen the dual mode like on other 32 inch modes. I tried that LG. I wanted to love it because you can switch to the 480 mode in 24 inches. It looked like a blurry mess. Now they use an aspect ratio on here, shrinks it down to 1332. And let me tell you, it's not a regular 24 inch. It is super sharp. It looks way better than any 24 inch out on the market at 1080p. It looks amazing. So I always miss that feature. And that is something if you guys are playing super competitively, you like to be up, have your face like, like this on the monitor, you know, <laughs> you can't go wrong with the aspect ratio. Because me personally, I can't use 24 inch monitors anymore because it's just not enough real estate for editing. It's not enough for content consumption. Stuff looks pretty bad. So I like being able to switch from a 1440p down uh, 27 inches down to a 24 inch like experience. And I get the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the panel. This is a W OLED panel and it is matte. I know that's gonna be a killer for a lot of you out there. I know a lot of you are just team glossy. By the way, let me know, are you team glossy or team matte? Let me know down in the comments. Me, I'm in the camp of, yes, I do notice a difference, but is it gonna keep me from this monitor in the 480 hertz? No. Is QD OLED and the semi-glossy a little punchier when it comes to colors and color reproduction? Yes, 
but is it distracting to me? No. If you do want a glossy version, you're gonna have to wait for the QD OLEDs to come up to 480 hertz and they're on their way. Since the W OLEDs do get a little bit brighter, I find that the contrast between the dark and bright images is more apparent, causing images to be actually popular on the W OLED in some areas. But again, the depth and the colors are better on the QD OLED in my opinion. And just for fun, I just wanna show you guys a little demonstration of when I just turned off the lights, all the lights in the room, had a black screen running on here, a black video, and it just gets completely pitch black. You cannot tell the room from the monitor, and that is the strength of W OLED or just OLEDs in general compared to IPS, which will still have some blooming there. Technology is moving really fast on these OLED panels. They used to be really hindered by the brightness. Now these are 20% brighter than its predecessors, and I already thought that those were pretty damn good. Now it's just even better and I don't find myself wanting for more brightness. For comparison, their old flagship from Asus, the PG27 AQN only went up to 400 nits. This is 450 nits. So they fixed that issue In HDR, this goes up to 1300 nits now. This monitor is pretty damn badass. It's giving you everything that you would want outside of maybe just being glossy as one of the only flaws. Another issue with the W OLEDs and why I switched to QD OLEDs was the text. But they have a new pixel sub layout on here and the text looks great on this thing. So another negative turned to a positive. And on all fronts, I feel like this is an upgrade to their previous 360 hertz monitors. So a lot of y'all are wondering, should I upgrade from a 360 hertz or even a 240 hertz to this 480 hertz monitor? Well, to that I say, do you wanna win? Do you wanna win? Are you serious about winning or not? If you're serious, buy this monitor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't have to buy it. But I wanna just share my experience with you real quick. I did try a 480 hertz IPS monitor before and I wasn't impressed. You know, with IPS, it just didn't give me the motion clarity to really understand or even visually see how much of a difference the 480 hertz would make. But now on the OLED, I feel like the 480 hertz is unlocked. I immediately, from switching over to a 360 hertz to a 480 hertz, saw a huge jump in just the overall motion clarity and the movement. It just looked different and it took me a little bit to adjust. But just keep in mind, for something like this, you wanna have 360 frames per second to 480 frames per second or even more, right? And to do that, most games, you're gonna have to turn down the settings all the way down. You're not gonna be on ultra high settings running this at 480 frames. It's just not happening with today's technology. So in Valorant, I already have all my settings all the way down. So for me, it did make a difference. So if you're not gonna do that, if you wanna run at high settings, I would probably just skip this monitor, go 360 Hertz for now. If you've been on an IPS monitor or 360 Hertz IPS monitor, and you go to something like this, you're definitely going to tell the difference or even a 240 Hertz IPS or TN, you're going to see a difference here. It's going to look fantastic. Forget the tech specs, forget all the jargon. This monitor is straight up eye candy. So that being said, I want to tell you who should be upgrading to this monitor and who shouldn't. If you have a 360 Hertz OLED, yes, I can see a difference, but I don't think it's worth spending another thousand dollars. So unless you just have to have the fastest monitor out, I would just pass. If you're on a 240 Hertz OLED or a 360 Hertz IPS, I would definitely consider upgrading if you've been running them for a while now. The advancements in OLEDs have been substantial since those original 240 Hertz OLEDs came out. And if you've been on an IPS, you'll appreciate the rich colors and blacks that this monitor adds to your gaming experience. This is also gonna be for the person that enjoys first person shooter games. That goes without saying, Valorant, Apex, Call of Duty, Halo, and even that new game Deadlock would be amazing with a monitor like this. And again, you gotta turn those settings down to get the full benefit of this monitor, but those fast paced games can really take advantage of the extra hertz. If you're playing like Black Myth Wukong, if you're playing things like racing games, I don't think that you need this much of a monitor. I think you can just go with a 360 hertz or even a 240 hertz monitor, or even just bump up to a 32 inch 4K monitor. Those games are gonna look fantastic. This is a very niche product and I think it's for first person shooters only. And if you do wanna play those type of games and you wanna take a break from first person shooters, yeah, you have the OLED panel, it's gonna look great, but your first priority should be those first person shooter games. It's crazy fast, has great colors, and with minimal flaws. I mean, you could say that the matte finish is a flaw, but I don't think so, as most people that play first-person shooters don't even really care about how their image looks, just that the monitor is fast. 
All right, so that's gonna do it guys. That is my review of the new Asus PG27 AQDM. This monitor gets a recommendation for me, but only for a niche group. All right, so easy enough. It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.